Alrighty, let's see if we've got a stream that's working. I need to make sure everything is set up right. Oh, they've changed it. Where is it? How do I get to it? Let me jump back to Classic Studio. Isn't it always like that when you're running late, then everything doesn't work the way you want it to? Okay. Hey, you guys already chatting. See, I didn't even know it until just now. Okay, great. And thank you for letting me know the sound is working. <laughs> All right, I'm going to drag this window to that monitor there so that way I can see you guys. Let me shrink this down a little bit before I drag it. And go over here. And that'll work. All right, so let's throw a title on the screen. You guys are probably already aware of what this topic is, but just in case you're not, boom, there's the topic for tonight. Guys, uh, yes, thank you, Unlucky Eddie. I uh, appreciate you double checking because sometimes we find out the hard way. And you know, I talk for three minutes and there's no audio. <laughs> tonight's topic is about setting up a tank now. And the reason this came up, I got a message on Insta, well, a, uh, a reply on Instagram that said, oh man, I really miss my tank and setting it up and growing the corals and sharing them with other hobbyists and, you know, selling some to the fish store. And he reminded me, this topic comes up a lot where people say, I'm out of the hobby, I miss it so much. I watch your stream because, or your videos to keep my passion alive. But at the same time, I miss it. And I had a buddy that was living here for a while and he was working a lot. And he said, I am building this dream tank. And he actually was, you know, I mean, he designed it completely from the ground up in Google Sketch. And you could pivot it from 360 degrees. He had measured flow and dynamics. He'd done all this stuff. But he still didn't have a tank. And I told him, you should set up a Nano right now. Just put a small tank in your apartment because you'll feel better. You'll be happier. And he said, yeah, I guess I could do that. And then, you know, I don't know, it was like a couple weeks later, boom, he was in a fish store. He bought a nice little, uh, what is that thing? I don't know, some kind of all-in-one tank. And, you know, he started getting little bits of gear, and he picked up some live rock, and he picked up some corals, and he picked up some fish. And he was actually hanging out in the fish stores more and more. And he was super excited, and pa his passion was even more invigorated than all the planning he'd been doing for months building the ultimate aquarium that he was going to build. And then, of course, you know, life gets a little crazy and there's a lot going on and that kept getting postponed, but he still could enjoy his nano. And that is the point of this stream. If you feel left out and if you feel like you aren't enjoying a tank right now for whatever reason, what about setting up a little tiny one just to kind of get by for now uh, in a way that will give you some personal enjoyment every single day? So... You know, you know, if you are in this live chat right now and you don't have a tank running, please, you know, let me know in the chat. You know, raise your hand. Say, it's me, it's me. Because I want to know how many of you don't have a tank right now. Because I have a feeling there's going to be a few of you in there. Now, uh, I'm going to drop this on here really quick. So I share a lot of pictures on Instagram. I want to make sure you're aware to be on Instagram and hang out with us because that is where some of the conversations happen. And then if you're not doing that and you're a Facebooker, you can find me on Facebook. This is a spot. By the way, I want to mention, hi, Simon. Okay, cool. So don't have a reef or a marine tank yet. I'm going to come right back to you in a second. Um, I have some people that will go to Facebook and they type in my real name and they find my personal page and then they follow it. And I just want you to know if you're following my page and there's about a thousand of you, you're never going to see an update because everything I set is shared to friends only. It's basically private. So if you want to follow me, follow me here on this link, facebook.com slash Milos Reef. I post on there every single day. I read your comments. I read your messages. I, you know, I reply to you. I take care of a lot of customers there too as well. So if you're trying to find me, that's the best way to reach me rather than my personal page. 
my personal page has already got way too many people on it as it is, and I have like, I have about a thousand people pending friend requests, and I'm just ignoring it. I have to really know the person to add them now, and I'd actually like to shrink that audience on my personal page, because it's personal. And, you know, I talk about things that have nothing to do with reef keeping. So, yeah, that's why I'm saying don't follow me as Mark Levinson, but follow me as Me Loves Reef. <laughs> that's my best advice. You know, you can do whatever you want, but you'll discover he never shares anything on Mark Levinson. And it's not that, you know, well, now you know why. <laughs> it's all, it, very little of it is set to public. All right. Now, uh, Simon, you are planning to set up a tank at some point. You may be doing the research. And I understand that, but at some point you have to get your hands wet. Unlucky Eddie says he's been postponing his tank for the past 10 years while doing research and living in crappy apartments. Fair enough. Maybe the apartment's not that great. Um, but like, for example, uh, about two months ago, I believe, maybe longer, time goes by really quick, there was a magazine, a, a coral magazine issue that came out that talked about reef vases. So a vase that has a reef in it. That's like three gallons, five gallons, one gallon. You know, they're really small. Uh, other people, I saw a guy, this is interesting, I, I came across a sponsored ad on Facebook where the guy took a picture of all the sun tea jars at Walmart. You know, so there's a whole rack of all these jars with a little spigot on the front. And he was promoting that he sells these jar reefs for like 125 bucks. And the weird thing to me was that there was no actual picture of a reef. It was just a rack of iced tea jars at Walmart. And that was his sales pitch. And I thought, that's kind of weird. We can all buy a, a picture at Walmart and, you know, do our own thing. Anyway, uh, so vase reefs are popular. The filtration involved, um, to be very honest, it's going to have to be super basic and your livestock choices are going to be very minimal. But you could do something really cool. And if it's a plastic jug, you can drill it very easily. If it's a glass jug, you're going to need a glass drilling bit to install some, some stuff in there. But bottom line, you're going to need an air stone. You might need some kind of a tiny power head buried in the rubble that moves water around the jar. Uh, you might get away with one tiny fish in there. Typically, people will try to avoid fish in that type of environment. No seahorses. I know you're thinking, oh, I can do a seahorse. No, don't do that. I mean, it wouldn't be smart. Uh, but you could put in some zoanthids. You could put in a couple of little tiny SPSs. You need a light, a nice light fixture over that tank. You'll need a heater, and you need, you know, airflow, oxygen, um, and some live rock. But think about it. That little tiny thing, you could probably set it up for, oh, I don't know. I bet the entire setup could be purchased with, you know, a decent light somewhere around 200 bucks. You know, you're gonna need test kits, you're gonna need a hydrometer to measure your salinity, you know, you're gonna have to uh, get a thermometer, you gotta buy a little tiny heater. I mean, you had to buy things, it's gonna cost you some money. Plus you gotta buy a bag of salt, and uh, you gotta have, you know, a bucket to mix the salt in, you know, you gotta have a pump to mix the salt water. So there's some investment there, but if you're saying, oh man, I really wanna set up a 180 gallon reef, but I can't pull it off yet because it's going to be too much money or I don't have a spot for a six-foot tank. Maybe you can set up a small tank and just enjoy, you know, 16 gallons of life. And I just want to encourage you to jump in and try it out. Uh, let's see what some of you guys are saying. Ah, I see Eddie has updated me and say he's bought a house, so he's going to be setting up a tank soon. That's cool. Okay, Troy went the other direction. He set up a little 23 liter, what is that, like four gallons, five gallons um, tank, and then he upgraded to a 300 liter. So, you know, it worked. You start a little tiny tank and it got you motivated to do a big one. But, you know, basically my point is tonight that if you aren't able to run a tank now, maybe you can run a little tiny one to make yourself happy. And the reason I say this, it's not me just trying to convince people to buy stuff. But my friend, who hadn't set up his dream tank yet, must have told me six different times, Mark, I gotta thank you for telling me to set up this little tiny tank because it just makes me so happy. And he really was, you know, enjoying having that. And then in the end, he ended up having to move out of state. And I had to swing over to his apartment and pick up all the stuff and get all that livestock. So I have some of his stuff in my setup. Um, 
So yeah, if you get a small tank and you live in my area and you're planning to move away, you know, I get to score some free goods. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, no, I mean, just, I think you should enjoy it. I think you shouldn't hold off. I, I realize, you know, it's kind of a funny mentality I have because when I was growing up and I wanted something new, I always had to save up for it. You know, I didn't buy it with a credit card. You know, I was young. And, you know, that was babysitting and washing cars and doing stuff for the Boy Scouts. You know, there was no money. But um, I saved up allowances and some cash, and occasionally I got some money as a gift or whatever, and I saved. Uh, and my friends, they'd buy things instantly. They just got it. And I would hold off. Like, I want this really nice surround sound system, for example. And they said, well, why don't you just get this boom box for now? I know, I'm dating myself, but uh, just get this boom box. You'll have some music now. Why would you hold out for the better one? And I thought, well, I don't want to spend all this money on this little one or this, this inferior one when I'm saving up for the good one because I end up having to buy twice. But that's, I'm, tr I'm pushing that to the side for this conversation. And I'm saying you have literally uh, restricted yourself entirely from any kind of livestock because you're holding out for whatever reason. And instead you could enjoy a small tank, maybe some cute little anemone, a little couple of clown fishes. Uh, you can get some cleaner shrimp. You could get a decorator crab. You could play with urchins. I mean, starfish. There's so many things you could put in a tank. And you could just have that for now to tide you over until you can get into the situation where you can set up the bigger dream tank that you've always wanted. Okay. Uh, now's your chance. If you guys have questions, throw them at me. Uh, Nick B. suggests the dollar gallon sale. And he's talking about Petco or PetSmart. And I, I kind of merge those two together in my head all the time. I think it's PetSmart. And those guys uh, will offer a 10-gallon for $10, a 20-gallon for $20, a 40-gallon for $40. So there you could set up a small glass box and put some, uh, you could baffle it yourself or do something to create, you know, a filtration. Or you can actually install a sump beneath it and go all in. But uh, I'm kind of leaning more toward getting yourself an all-in-one tank, just something to that kind of takes care of itself, that's minimal effort, that you can just set up and enjoy. Okay. Uh, Brandon says that he just set up a small 10-gallon tank. It looks like a freshwater, maybe? Um, just to kind of get by until he's ready for a 65-gallon. Cool. Uh, Darkwing asks the question, what size tank or weight do I need to start worrying about when it comes to structural questions in my home? Is it on the first floor, like the foundation, or is it on the second floor, or even the third floor? You know, if you have one of those homes, or a home with a basement and you're, you know, two stories up. Uh, it could be that you are on a room, you're in a room that's kind of floating in the middle versus one that's on top of a load-bearing wall. You want to know which way the joists, which are the boards in the floor, are they going this direction, or are they going that direction? Because, for example, if the joists are going this way, and you set a tank on top of it, and you know, here's your wall, and here's your joist, 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 joist. And the tank is on top of it like this, it could teeter for it could actually fall forward. So you always want to have your tank across the joist, perpendicular. You don't want them running parallel with the joists. It's very important. And uh, when it comes to weight, think about this. Um, let's say you set up a hundred gallon tank, and let's just round off and say a hundred gallons is ten pounds a gallon. So you're looking at a thousand pounds, right? Am I saying that right? Am I doing? I hate doing math live because that's when I usually mess it up. When I'm just sitting here quietly by myself, my brain just churns out the numbers. Bottom line is, it could be a lot of weight in that one small footprint, which is 12 inches wide by 48. So, could you put four or five people in that spot and jump up and down and see what the the floor feels like? Does it is it real soft and bouncy, or is it more rigid and sturdy? You know, you want to make sure that you can handle the weight. Uh, it's always good to have plans for a home to verify. If it's a concrete foundation, there is no weight you have to worry about. I mean, unless you're crazy and you're doing a 20,000-gallon tank, then, you know, of course you're going to have to reinforce. But like my tank, uh, it's 400 gallons, and it's got a steel stand, and the tank alone, empty glass tank, was 1,200 pounds. So you've got that. The steel stand, I bet that steel stand weighed... I'm going to guess it was 500 pounds. I'm wrong. I don't know. There's no way to weigh it. But it was so heavy. Two of us tried to move it. And we got about 15 feet from the truck. And I had no energy left. I mean, I'm, 
I like to think I'm kind of strong. <laughs> and I was done. I was like, wow, I can't go another foot. And I didn't mean like, let me get a drink of water and we'll keep going. I mean, I was just done. I think that was maxed out. I mean, yeah, I think it was a ton of weight. And uh, when it was time to put it into place, we used four people to put that stand in place. So I really do think it's crazy heavy. You know, but, I don't know it's all made of quarter inch steel and it's big and it's heavy. So uh, I was wondering would the foundation of my home be able to handle all this? But uh, not an issue at all. So concrete floor, yes. If you're floating on top of, you know, like if it's a, a pier and beam home where things are floating, you might have to actually put piers underneath to reinforce that area. If you have a basement, you might need to actually put a post or two from the floor of the, found, of the uh, basement up to the joist to reinforce those joists to make them strong so that the tank will stay nice and stable. Basically, if you put a tank on there and you fill it up with water and you can rock it, there's something to be worried about. It should be, it should be rock solid. You don't want it where you're leaning on it and thing falls forward, and, or, or on a child even, if a child grabs it because children do some nutty stuff. Oh, Petco ended their $1 sale. I thought it was PetSmart. Well, they, they do it over and over. You just have to wait until a little bit later. But in the meantime, you can get an all-in-one tank. Um, Nuvo does it. Cobalt does it. Eheim does it. Uh, JBJ. I mean, there's so many out there that you could set up. Uh, let's see. Okay. So let's say I've convinced you to set up a small tank or even a larger tank and you want to travel like I do. Uh, the best thing you can do is have a tank sitter. And that is a person that has been trained how to take care of your aquarium. Uh, and basically what you're wanting them to do, or what I want them to do, is look at my system when they stop by and make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to. They basically have to know the nuances of the tank. They should know what it sounds like when it's normal. They should know when it doesn't sound normal. And they should know what things look like and when things are not working correctly. And that's something you have to teach them. It's going to take some time. And, you know, mistakes will be made, but hopefully you can minimize them. One of the best things you can do with a, a tank if you're not going to be there is to have a controller on it. And the Apex controller is the number one that comes to my mind because so many of us have them. And then those that don't, I tell them you should get one because it's a really good controller that keeps you incommunicado with your tank. You can actually uh, open your phone, check the app, and see what's going on with you know temperature, pH. Uh, you can see how much electricity is being consumed. You can actually make sure it's running. If you have a home alarm system, you can point one or two cameras from the alarm system at the tank and actually visually look at the camera feed and see how it's doing. Some people have tied the camera feed to their apex. I think it's a little more challenging. It's not one of those simple plug and play solutions yet. Who knows, maybe down the road they'll do it and they'll say, here's the camera and we'll all be plug and play. It'd be super awesome. And right now it's a little more complicated. But having someone to watch your tank is, is best. Now, okay, so let me talk about the guy who I convinced to get this Nano. And then I told you he had to move out of state. Craziest story ever. He set up his tank, and I think it's like a... I don't know the size of that tank, but let's just say it's 19 gallons or something. 23 gallons. It's some funny shape. And he said, well, i got to set up a top-off for it while I'm out of town. And normally he used a five-gallon jug. But he thought, you know, I'm going to be gone for a little bit longer than I planned, you know, than I've done in the past. I'm going to set up a 10-gallon tank. And he set that up with RODI water, and, his, and he moved his auto top off into it so it would replenish the water as it evaporates. And he was gone for three weeks. Three weeks on a 10-gallon uh, top off. And so he calls me on FaceTime. And, well, actually, he calls me on the phone, and we're driving. You know, he's driving home from the airport. He goes, hey, I'm just back in town. I'm, I'm heading to my apartment now. We're just catching up on everything. And then he said, okay, hang on, let me switch you to FaceTime. And I said, okay, I thought we were done. He goes, no, I need to go inside and I need to show you the tank. And I was like, no, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see your tank of death because after all this time, I pictured all the water had evaporated down and the, you know, the pumps had burned up and the circulation had stopped and the light had baked everything that was exposed to the air. And there's going to be a tank of black death water that reeks. And that's what it was going to be. And I said, I don't want to watch. And I'm like, cover my eyes. And he said, no, no, it's going to be, it, you know, let's see, let's see what happens. You know, if I have to live it, you have to live it. <laughs> and he walked in and the tank looked 100% normal like he'd left it the day before. I was so astounded. I mean, I, I really was because I expected the worst. You know, it's nice to hope. 
but I really expected the worst. He had no controller on there, like, to check on the tank, so it was really a wing and a prayer. He just hoped for the best and set it up. But one of the neat things he did was he raised the temperature of the apartment so it wouldn't be as cool in there and it wouldn't evaporate as much water. And it allowed that water to actually uh, last the full three weeks. There was still some water left in the top-off tank, which was insane. And I think one of the reasons he could raise tank temperature or the uh, apartment temperature up and the tank not be affected is because nowadays we use LED lighting and we use pumps that use less power. They don't add a lot of heat to the water, so the tank was actually able to sit in a warmer room and not get too hot. And it was able to replenish uh, top off just a little bit at a time. And it survived three weeks with just an auto feeder trickling in food once a day. Uh, matter of fact, I'm surprised, you know, and I think, I can't remember if his skimmer was turned on or not. Because, you know, you, typically the skimmer gets so full it just overflows and makes a mess. And there was none of that. So maybe he had the skimmer turned off while he was out of town, which again is crazy. I would have my skimmer on. And it's still, I mean, the tank was doing great. He says, as a matter of fact, it's never looked better because he had kept his hands out of there. <laughs> he wasn't there to touch it and mess with it. So that was a crazy story. And uh, so, yeah, it can work. You can, you can get really lucky and it'll all work out. All right. Can't do the math at 2.20 p.m. <laughs> That's all right. I'm at 8.29. I haven't had dinner yet. And I'm like, is 100 times 10 a thousand? <laughs> so bad. All right, uh, question. Let's see. Brandon asks, let me read it first. <sighs> okay, Brandon, this is a little bit, you know, we're, you're jumping off topic, but I'll, I'll address it. He's had a tank in storage for 15 years, an aquarium, a glass aquarium. He wants to know if it's, you know, if he could use it, you know, and does it need to have the silicone removed and resealed? So let's talk about silicone and, um, and glass. So give me a second here. I'm going to do a real quick rough sketch here for you from two angles. And then we'll do another one like this. All right, I gotta change colors. And we're gonna go here and fill this in. And then we're gonna do this. I wish I had, oh, I do, nice, okay, good. So, we're looking at this right here, first of all. Top picture is a top-down view of two pieces of glass. You've got glass right here, and of course the other side panel, and then you've got silicone in here, and then they've got what looks like a fillet. It's kind of curved, and the idea is to help strengthen that area and let the fish not pick at it or dig into it. That's how they make tanks. When you reseal a tank, what you are doing is you are literally just cutting out this piece here and removing this triangle. You can't get to all this silicone down here that's between the glass. You can't, unless you literally slice the tank apart completely to remove every trace of silicone and start brand new. So if you want to cut out that little triangle up here and replace it with new silicone just there, you can do that. It's, it's not a, out of the question and people do it, but you're never gonna be able to replace the part that's been sitting between two pieces of glass for 15 years that part is holding on, I like to say magically, because silicone bonds glass to glass. Totally does. There are hundreds of thousands of aquariums out there made of glass or silicone, but they let go. That's why I say it's magical. <laughs> they seem to be fine until they're not. It's like a check valve, they fail. So if you were to take your 15 year old aquarium and scrape out the fillet and put new fillet in there, all you're doing is putting a new band-aid of fresh silicone on the inside perimeter all the way around, you know, bottom, sides, verticals, you know, you're doing all that. A lot of work, but the actual bond that's holding the glass to the glass, it's aged. It's super old. 
The silicone after 15 years is probably not nearly as supple as it was originally. It's probably more brittle. Uh, it could have started peeling apart or weakening its grip. Uh, the storage it was in could have got hot, could have got cold, could have got frozen, could have got baked. I mean, just depends on time of year and where it's located. Uh, the actual stress of moving the tank to put it in the storage, how it's sitting on wherever it's sitting, whether it's on the floor or a stand or across a couple of sawhorses, all these things come into play. And typically when someone tells me they have a tank that's crazy old like that, and I'm, you know, 15 years, that's old. I tell them, did you get your money's worth out of that tank? It, it, don't you think it'd be smarter to get a nice new one that's got fresh silicone and a warranty? That's kind of how I feel about it. I have never tried to reseal a tank because I'm not removing all the silicone. I can only scrape out what you can reach. And then, like I said, whatever's between the glass, you're just gonna hope it's still okay. And I'm just not willing to take that chance because when I set up a tank, I set it up for life. I set it up and I expect it to last until the day it just blows out. And uh, I've had a couple of tanks, you know, one lasted six years, one uh, this one that I currently have, actually, after 13 months, sprung a leak and had to be completely rebuilt. And then eventually I got it you know, I got it replaced. And uh, this one's been running now for almost four years. So, fingers crossed, right? I mean, you know, how long until the silicone lets go? It's just one of those things. So I don't really recommend the whole thing. And a lot of people talk about resealing tanks. And I've asked people, well, what do you think? And, you know... What did you do and how did it work out? You know, I try to find the follow-up because there's so many people say, oh yeah, you can do it, but they don't tell you how long it lasts or how it ended up playing out. This one guy, he did a really cool build thread about taking a tank apart completely. I mean, he literally sliced it apart, scraped off every bit of silicone and then re-glued and accidentally during the process of rebuilding his tank, shattered the front panel of the glass uh, of that tank. I mean, just blew it to pieces and had to buy a new piece of glass, which made the project even more expensive because now you had to buy fresh glass. Uh, it was a great picture though. Okay, uh, Troy mentions that he uses Aquatronica controllers. That I just wanted to say that uh, for those of you that might be in other countries, you know, because I, I default to what's available in the US. So maybe you can get Aquatronica in your country. And he says it's about half the price of an Apex. <laughs> my opinion is making fun of me. He says, you can draw at 8.30, but you can't do math. Math is hard. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Seahorse Whisperer, hi, asks, how long can we expect a tank to last? I'll tell you this. Um, usually the answer is not what we want to hear. We, uh, I like to say, well, how long is the warranty? And if they say one year, then I tend to think it's good for one year. <laughs> but that's not, you know, that's not my belief. It's just my thought. Uh, I think the average lifespan of an aquarium tends to be, for a lot of people, is about five years. And that doesn't mean the tank let go at five years. It could have gone longer, and maybe it has. It just seems like people that come in the hobby last five years. I've been in the hobby 20, and uh, I, I'd say that I am not the norm. Yes, that's right. I'm not. I'm calling myself not normal because there's so many people that grab a hobby and they they do it for a little while and then they stop and they pick up a new hobby and they do that for a little while and then they stop and they do another hobby and maybe they eventually come back to the first one again because it was fun or they miss it. But for those of us that set up a reef and want to grow it into something amazing, you know, we're putting in a multi-year investment into that project and we're expecting the tank to hold and not let go. So yeah, I do ask manufacturers of tanks, how long is your warranty? And uh, I talked to Planet Aquariums recently. They're based out of Fort Worth, Dallas. They, uh, they build them here in our area, and you have to buy them through a fish store. And I said, how long is your warranty? And I'm, the reason I asked him that is so I'd remember it if it ever came up. And now I'm not 100% positive, but I think he said a three-year warranty. So that would make me feel good, knowing you get a three-year warranty. Um, you did have to use their stand, but their stands look really nice. Last weekend, I was in Houston, and I went to Reef Currents, and there was two Planet Aquariums that were in the raffle. And one came with all the gear. It came with a Radeon light. It came with, uh, I don't know. There's, I have a picture of it. I'll, eventually, I'll share it. And uh, it was full of treasure. It was a great setup. And, you know, stand and everything, it looked really good. And uh, that one came with, you know, I think three-year warranty. <laughs> Man, why do I have to forget things? Oh, it just, it's the worst. All right. 
Uh, well, Seahorse Whisperer says, you know, hobbyists equaling five years, is, it's, they don't have the passion. It's not really that. There is a lot of frustration in this hobby. You get frustrated. Uh, I get frustrated. You spend an enormous amount of time to get your tank just the way you want, and you spend a ton of money too. And then it's doing fine and it's doing well and then something goes wrong and you lose a lot of progress. The equipment is still there. The tank is still there. You didn't lose that. But the livestock that you watched turn into something amazing for six months or a year or whatever dies way back and you're down to some DNA. You know, you're down to a little tiny puddle and you know it's going to take three, six, nine months or longer to get back to where you were. And it could be something as minor as an alkalinity swing or a auto feeder overdose that knocked your phosphates crazy high or uh, a dosing pump that puts in way too much know, magnesium or acro power or something like that that can just really futz up a beautiful reef and you know you've got a bare minimum of 12 weeks to watch the tank recover before it starts to grow again you know it just has to kind of like sit there and, and rebound from the hell it just went through and that kind of time loss is super frustrating, and it can make you discouraged with a hobby. I know when people see my tank, and I'm, I'm going to try to say this without sounding vain, or, or I want to stay humble, but the point is, people look at my tank and like, wow, I wish my tank would look like yours, Mark. So that tells me their tank doesn't look like mine. They, uh, maybe they see a lot of rock and just a few twigs, and they don't see a full-blown reef like I do, you know, because I, I want it filled up with big, giant corals, and I don't cut anything. First tip I have for those of you that are doing that, quit fragging stuff when they're frags. Leave them alone and let them grow. Because when you trim off stuff, you're actually making more open op openings in the reef and it makes it look more bare. So let it fill up with some cool stuff. Um, but yeah, if you get discouraged, if you get frustrated, you know, if you have a really bad string of bad luck, that can make you leave the hobby. And uh, that happens to a lot of people because they come into the hobby with a lack of knowledge. They just don't know enough. And, you know, they buy their tank and they get some livestock and things are dying and they just see their money being flushed away and they get really discouraged and they tell all their friends, this hobby's too hard, don't get one. When really, with some good knowledge, you could have a really nice successful tank. And that's why I keep doing these videos. All right, let's see. Uh, Simon says, custom aquariums might give lifetime warranties. That would be awesome. All right, let's see. Okay, um, Darkwing asked a good question. I'm thinking about moving to a new place. Is there a good website to figure out local reef scenes, events, club events? Uh, and, you know, he's bouncing around locations where he might live. I can tell you the first place to look for anything is going to be Google. Second place would be Facebook. Both of those two sites will give you information about anything you want to know when it comes to finding reef events. You just type it in, reef club and the city, reef event uh, and a location. Uh, there are groups that literally just dedicate their time to updating the latest events and it's just one, build, one big build thread. Uh, getting a warning here. I think YouTube's having a problem. So I'm sorry if this is getting really spotty. But my deal says it's still doing the perfect frames per second. Whew. Okay, I think we're okay. Um, so if you're looking for events that happen, you know, I try to talk about them. For example, and I was going to mention it anyway, on Sunday there's going to be an event here in San Antonio. So I'm going to be driving down to that this weekend. That's why I'm doing the stream tonight because I leave in the morning for, uh, I'm going to go see my grandson. And I'm going to hang out near Austin, and then I'll go to San Antonio first thing Sunday for their frag swap. And the club is mast, M-A-A-S-T, dot org. And if you go there, you'll see a link on their website for Lamar, L-M-A-R. I know. I'll put, I'll put a link in the notes uh, when this is published. And that event is from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock, and it's their frag swap. So I'm going to be there if you want to come say hi, if you want to get some new frags, if you're... Uh, just wanting to see some eye candy in person, come to that event. It's being held by the Mast Club, which is the San Antonio group. So that would be cool. Um, it looks like I will be flying to Las Vegas next month. So that's coming up in the near future, and it's Machina-related. So I'll be talking about that. 
I've got something new in the works that I will be talking about as it becomes more real. But right now, the wheels are turning, the ideas are happening, and uh, I think you'll like it. I think some of you are going to be very happy about it. So that's coming out. The pump testing station, uh, the tanks are all built, uh, but this week has been filled with taking care of customer orders, and I couldn't build the actual stand yet. And here I'm leaving for the weekend, so I can't touch it. Uh, so I'm going to have to work on that. As i got to squeeze it into next week somehow between some custom orders. And I want to get that built because I want to start testing pumps. So that's coming up. What else? Um, trying to think there's another event. Oh, yeah, I want <laughs> Duh. So my club is DFW Mass, which is Dallas-Fort Worth Marine Aquarium Society. And on May 19th, we're doing a tank tour. And what that is is it's a club tank tour, and we drive from club member's house to club member's house to see their reef tanks in person. We hang out for about 30 minutes. We eat all their cookies. We drink all their sodas, and we go to the next house. And this lasts all day long. It's on a Saturday. So if you are in DFW Mass, I'm telling you now, you're invited. If you're not a member of DFW Mass, but you're in my area, join the club now. Just go to dfwmass.org and join the club and come to our tank tour. It's a lot of fun. It's very educational. Just like you learn things when you walk into a fish store and you ask questions, you can ask hobbyists about their own tank and see how it's doing and how they make, you know, what makes it tick. And you can ask them anything. You say, well, what food do you buy? And, you know, what test kit do you trust? And how long have you had that coral? And what's the biggest fish in your tank? I mean, you can go into all these details and... They give you a little kind of synopsis about it, and then you get to ask questions and kind of see what's under the stand or in the room behind. And I'll tell you this, my tank is on the tour. Um, I just got confirmation that Ryan's tank is going to be on the tour. It's a thousand gallon reef. Uh, Tammy's tank is going to be on the tour. And I know there's been a lot of requests on this channel for me to update her tank, and I'm sorry it hasn't happened yet. It's definitely on my list of things to do, and it will happen. I must do it. I will do it, I swear. So I'm just putting it out, out there so you guys know I haven't forgotten. So there's three big tanks right there. Mine's 400, Ryan's is 1,000, Tammy's is 800. That's a lot of water right there. And there's going to be some other ones too, I'm sure. So that'll be a lot of fun, and that's on May 19th. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, like I said, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, even if you're a little further away, if you want to come on our tour that day, uh, all you got to do is join the club and, and you, know, you can join in. It's a lot of fun because... We uh, take our vehicles, so it's not like there's a limit other than how much parking there is on the street. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ah, the finger. It's okay. The uh, fingerprint will probably heal. I sliced it yesterday on a sump. I was so annoyed. I, I had already routed it, so basically it was ready just for the final polish. And so I was running my finger along the edge, and there was this razor-thin layer sticking out you know, about that far, and it just went sliced right through my fingertip. I couldn't even believe it. I was really annoyed. So one person on Instagram said, you need some new glasses, Mark. And you know, he's not wrong. <laughs> that was a bummer. Yes, I need to get a fresh video of Tammy's tank. I will, I promise. Uh, Dwayne's tank uh, has been really watched a lot by people lately. Uh, another quick update. I want to mention that uh, my Radeon that I switched a couple of weeks ago is doing great. Uh, it's... It was, you guys saw me connect it, and essentially, I haven't touched it since. I think I might have messed with the color slightly uh, the next day, and that was it. I have left it completely alone. I, I'm so hands-off, it's ridiculous. And the color that comes off the Radeon Gen 4 Pro is so much better than the Gen 2, and that is just remarkable to me because you know radeon radeon newer older so what you know what's the difference turns out there's a huge difference the um i knew they'd added a couple extra color channels but that's you know and there was a better fan and you know but i mean it was all talking through eco smart live and the anemones and the anemone cube are so much prettier now and unfortunately the color that looks best to my eye is very hard to photograph so you know when i post a picture it just kind of looks like uh, you know, neon colors under black light. You know, it looks insane. But to the eye, it's beautiful. It's relaxing. It's awesome. I just wish I could make a camera capture what I see and give it to you vividly and accurately. But I haven't found the ability to do that as accurately as I would like. I'm too much of a perfectionist. I demand, you know, so much out of stuff. But it really glows. The little tiny anemones that were blah and bland are just vivid with greens 
and striations. The pinks are crazy lush. You know, it's just, it's amazing. So I want to tell you guys to uh, be sure to, you know, if you are hemming and hawing about upgrading your Radeon light to a better one, it's worth it. And the sad thing is I owned that light for a very long time before I installed it. It was one of those things where, well, I got to get up on a step ladder and I got to disconnect wires and not drop the old light into the tank. And I kind of held off on that forever. And I finally did it a few weeks ago. Man, it's so much better. And I just, I, I, every time I look at the tank, I love it more now. So, uh, you, one person asked me if I'll be selling the old fixture. You just heard how horrible my tank looked under it. <laughs> you sure you want it? <laughs> No, I um, don't plan to sell it. I plan to throw it over the frag tank, which sounds stupid because I just told you everything looks so much better on the new light. Why use the old one? But I'll mess with the colors on the old one and maybe I'll get it to look a little bit better. It was uh, just doing its thing all this time and uh, the new channels are just so much nicer. I'm just shocked. And I mentioned that on one of the threads on Facebook and Mark Callahan from Mr. Saltwater TV, he said, yes, the lighting is completely different. So that was... Uh, I felt kind of a little bit silly that I waited so long. You know, I had the technology here and I just didn't hook it up. I've got a product review coming up on a skimmer that I got, uh, Somatic. I've been running it now for probably three and a half months. And I really am impressed with the skimmer. And you know how, I know that you guys think, oh, Mark always tests the expensive stuff. This is a $200 skimmer. It's not a lot of money. It's doing a great job, dead silent, uses uh, 18 watts of power. Uh, the cup comes off super easy. Well, there you go. My review is done. I don't have to do the video now. <laughs> I'll just tell Somatic I talked about for 31 seconds in this video. No, uh, it's really, it's a nice skimmer. So I will definitely be doing that as a separate review. But uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it. I want to take it apart once to clean it. And once I do that, then I'll do the review because then I can tell you what it was like to take it apart after months of use. Uh, Rochelle Conrad asks about setting up, uh, asking if I have a video about setting up a sump and how each section works. And actually, one of my videos on this channel is about cycling a tank, and it answers exactly those questions. So find my cycling a tank. If you just go to, you know, this channel and go to the little search bar on my page, you know, you can put it in the top and you'll get everyone, but that will search just my channel. And you can type in the word cycle and boom, you'll get the, that'll be the very first video. And I cycled my 60 gallon frag system and it has its own sump, it has its own dosing container, it has its top off container, it has a refugium, a skimmer, a return zone, a uh, Vectra L1, uh, M1 pump. So it goes into all of that. So that would be the one to watch. Hopefully you can find it. Let's see. All right guys, uh, it's 8.51, I think this is long enough. We haven't crashed and burned, which makes me happy. One more time, I'm going to say find me on Instagram. Uh, I'm, I love it. By the way, this is going to be really random because I notice things. I pay attention. And, you know, I've been picking up followers. You know, that's just normal. That's how Instagram works. And, you know, my channel is very small over there. It's not like, oh, he's got 300,000 people. You know, I've got like maybe 3,000 people following me. So I notice when people follow. And for the last two weeks... I can't, and this is going to be so random, but I found five different models following my channel. Just a model, like a model in New York, a model in Milan, Italy. I mean, just like, it's a model. And they're, they have a huge channel with like 35,000 followers or 125,000 followers. And they're following mine. And when I go to theirs, they have nothing about pets or aquariums or anything at all. I don't get it. Why would models be following me? Why aren't they calling me? <laughs> <laughs> but that's just so strange, right? I mean, don't you agree? I don't know. Maybe it's the Russians. I don't know what's going on. I mean, it, they can't do anything to a channel. And I just happened to notice because I checked. It doesn't affect anything. It's just surprising. You know, you would think it'd just be people that care about the hobby following me on Instagram. But it's just something funny. It cracks me up. All right. Um, I guess I'll stick this on the screen really quick. If you don't have Reef Trace, it is an app that I'm a partner of. Reef Trace came out uh, six months ago, and it is available for Android and for iOS, so either platform is supported. It's $4, you know, $3.99. Uh, you can track your water parameters with it. You can uh, see graphs. You can check out Critter ID. There's a marketplace. 
There is an LFS locator that's fantastic that finds all the stores near you within 45 miles or wherever you are. Uh, it's a very nice app. A lot of people are enjoying it. And guess what? They're adding some new features to it. So those are in the works. I'm not going to tell you what they are now. I'll let you know Reef Trace make the announcements themselves. But there's some stuff in the works. It'll be some little add-on that'll probably cost you a buck to make the app do a little bit more. But um, it'll flesh it out and make it even more useful than what it is now. And I think you'll really appreciate it. I uh, I, I did part of that uh, app is in can't even say it. Part of the app includes videos I made of how to do water testing. And I made tests of, I mean, I did videos of test kits I've used that I use myself. And I bought myself another, mm, I don't know, I've probably got 10 or 12 test kits to film. So those are going to be added soon. And that way you can actually see how a test is performed. If you've lost the instructions to your test kit, the instructions are in the app. So you can still pull them up easily. It even includes the color card. So if you lost the color card, you can compare against the color right on the screen. So, I mean, it's a really useful app. And, you know, so if you don't have it, you should get it. Uh, if you have any problems with the app, be sure to talk with ReefTrace Live. They are the tech people that answer the tech support stuff. If you ran into a problem, I'm sure they'll be happy to get you back on track. Uh, it might have been something temporary. I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of that part. I, my job was content. Their job is to make it run and keep you happy. So that is everything. Uh, the Fifth Dimension says, so what's your verdict on nano tanks? And I would say nano tanks are awesome in a small environment or if you want to do a species only or if you just wanted something now to keep yourself happy. And that was the whole point of this video. Do something that makes you smile every day. And you know, I think setting up a small tank if you have no tank at all right now is the perfect thing for you to do. That's it. I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I'll be back next week. I will be rolling out a new video next week, too. So that's it. Have a great night, guys. Bye.